Ah, palm trees. What's not to love about them? And the versatility with the queen palms, the tropical beauty of the Eureka palms, the chonkiness of the Edenidia palms, all these palms, palms that are pretty easy to come by, ones that you're likely to find in most places, smaller sizes at your big box stores. Ideally, your local nurseries every now and then get lucky enough to try something new. That's what this video is about, the Gaussia palms. And yes, I know many of my viewers are in Florida, in California, Hawaii, all over the world where lots of palm trees are available. But for people like me, live further up north in zone six, you generally see the same thing everywhere you go. You've got your majesties, your Eurekas, your cat palms. Lucky if you find some Adenidias, maybe some foxtails, some queens, robolinis, maybe a rapsis, see a lady palm sometimes if you're lucky. This year, I was fortunate enough to get to try out something new, which I don't get to do all that often because I just don't find things that are new up here very often. This year, I was lucky enough to try out some new palm trees. They were forced upon me, but it's fine. I'll take it. Pardon the background. There's construction going on. We're just gonna go with it. It's fine. This is, are you, you gonna be a problem? Got the doggies hanging out by the tripod. This is my year end report on the Gaussia palms. We'll talk a little bit about the species in general and what I've noticed this year growing them. The New World palm, largely in the Caribbean, places like Cuba, they're common to find growing in limestone outcrops, meaning hillsides, cliff sides, areas that are pretty harsh, a harsh environment for a lot of plants to grow. And then there is another Gaussia palm that's called the uh, Gomez Pompeu, I believe. And that one is more inland in the Mexico areas and it has a much more fat trunk on it. it looks a lot like a bottle palm. Pretty neat looking. They're becoming more common in cultivation, which is exciting. So hopefully it's something that more people will be able to grow. Unfortunately, I don't have an identification on these. Normally I have Adenidia palms in these containers and my larger palms go off to a greenhouse during the winter, the ones that don't fit in the house. And uh, the people who store them <laughs> killed those Adenidia palms and brought me these and said that they prefer these over the Adenidias because they store better for them in their greenhouse slash warehouse which I found to be pretty interesting. I can think of several reasons for that, mainly being that they seem to be much more drought tolerant than an Adenidia palm. Adenidia palms like things very moist and humid, whereas these are grown in areas that can take a lot of drought once they're established in larger palms, that is. How does that translate to being grown indoors? I don't know. I always like to make sure it's very clear whenever I'm talking about a plant, if it's something I've grown for a long time, that I make sure to mention that these I'm new to them, so this is just, just more of a book report, more of a just a show and tell. My experience growing these palms this spring and summer, early fall at this point, I would imagine indoors, you're gonna to wanna to give them very, very, very bright light, ideally in a warmer location of your home. Of course, like with any other houseplant, avoid cold drafts and letting them sit in water, all that houseplant stuff. Probably not going to be as fussy about humidity as you would have with palms like the Adenidias and Foxtails and Majesty palms where they like a very warm and moist environment. At least with the Caribbean ones where they're in some pretty harsh environments where there's plenty of humidity but lots of wind and airflow and just that extra drought tolerance. So I would imagine those would probably be better for indoors. The drought tolerance though of the Pompeo with that giant bulbous trunk suggests a lot of water storage. So maybe also a good option for indoors. Wouldn't have to water them too terribly often. Just like a lot of the other palm trees I grow indoors, I would probably just make sure to water them when the probably top three to four inches of the soil is dry. And of course, that's something that's going to have a lot of variance depending on the conditions inside your house. My house tends to be fairly cool during the winter, so I let things dry out a little bit more in between waterings. These palm trees have some really cool trunks. I can't identify mine other than saying that I don't think they're the Tempeo because I'm sure I will have had a picture up on the screen. Nowhere near as bulbous of a trunk, so this could be an outlier. I don't know, maybe this is a very subpar palm tree by whoever grew it before it got here. Regardless, really cool, kind of Jurassic looking trunks. Something kind of like you'd see on an Archidentra Phoenix, but not as smooth, much more rigid. You can see that there's a very defined line from where the old leaf bases come off. The oh, and on the note of these old leaf bases, these do not pop off anywhere near like they do on an Adenidia or a Foxtail. A lot of other smooth trunked palms where you could just you know, snap them off. These don't do that. They hang on for dear life. So essentially it could take longer to get to see some nice trunkage on them. That's just one of those things where you give it time and the more they swell, the easier they'll come off. You could always go ahead and cut it out, but 
I don't know, it seems unnecessary. These are a warmth and heat loving palm trees. That's something to keep in mind. They don't like things to go too cool. This is all from what I've read. People like me who are growing these further up north, that basically just means need to be more careful when it comes to the late summer and into the fall time when evening temperatures start to cool. If things are really moist, then that could heighten the risk of crown rot and potentially root rot. By warm, I mean warm. 70s, 80s, warmer temperatures. However, I have read a lot about these online and there are a lot of people who are growing these on Florida who said that theirs have taken white frost and recovered just fine from it. So brief spells of cold, maybe not going to kill them. That, I don't know. Like I said, this is my first year with them. I haven't had to grow these in the cold just yet. Observations I have growing them. One, not the fastest growers. So you can see there's some damaged fronds on this one, and even more so on this one over here. Those are the fronds that were on the palms when they got here. They were looking kind of scraggly when they were delivered to begin with. And normally with an adenidia or a foxtail, when those get, I don't know why those are the two I keep comparing them to, because they're the more common ones that are sold this far north as far as a trunking palm goes, that's why. With those palm trees, they tend to flush out new growth fairly quickly. Within about six weeks, you can have a new crown essentially on the palm tree and the old stuff doesn't matter. Whereas with this one, that hasn't been my experience. They have flushed out, which for me, that's not going to cut it. If they're going to have a lot of dieback in the wintertime when they're indoors, and then, <laughs> pardon the background noise, the dog's having a great time playing around in the empty pool. If they're going to have a lot of dieback in the wintertime, I like for them to be faster growers so that you only have to look at those old fronds for a while. As long as they're still green in them, I don't really like to cut them off. So. I've left the majority of these bad fronds on there all summer. It's a bit of an eyesore and maybe that'll be better next year. I did repot these when they were delivered. I just bumped them up what, by about an inch on the outside diameter. Not very much. I mostly just repotted them to get them into a stronger container. The containers that these were delivered in were very thin and plasticky. One of them was split all the way down the side. So they have a fresh mix, a nice coarse, organically rich, well-draining soil blend in there. They have seemed to have liked it. I've used palm gain on them one time in the beginning of the summer and the rest of the summer I've just been using a Jack's Classic Coat for foliar growth, for foliar plants. Tropical foliage, that's what I'm trying to say there. And I would attribute some of that damage on the fronds on both of these to partially just them going from that warehouse where they were in the understory, the warehouse where they are has palm trees that are up to like 45 feet tall. So they're probably getting a lot of shade and then they get brought here into the blazing sun. I wasn't going to try and acclimate them. That would have been the proper thing to do, but it was that's just not how things work out here. I'm not going to wait until mid-July to get things potted up because I'm waiting for palm trees to acclimate, right? So that definitely had an effect on some of those fronds. I have pruned off a few. <laughs> Can I help you? It's not fetch time. Work in here, Turbo. They have a more thin penne, the leaves, you want to call them that. Very thin, similar to a majesty palm. That's something I should have mentioned when it comes to caring for them indoors. The reason I'm not going to take these indoors, I'm going to let the people at that greenhouse take care of them over winter, is because these have spider mite magnet written all over them. Every single thing about the foliage on these just looks like spider mites would just love it. I'm going to let that be somebody else's problem this year. But taking that back to the majesty palm type foliage, foliage that scorches seemingly very easily, it's pretty common with most palm trees that they do best when they're smaller in a more shady location. And then as they get bigger, they can usually take more sun. I talked about this, maybe it was during the garden tour in relation to the Alexander palm, this big triple trunk palm over here that's backlit and hard to see. Smaller size, less light. Now this is nice and big, it can take a lot more sun. It makes sense, right? Plants start out lower to the ground. Usually there's a canopy with a lot of shade above it. And as they grow, they get up to where there's more light. And then they can take more light so that could also just be a size thing potentially as these get bigger they'll be able to take more sun we had some pretty intense heat back in july as did most of the country at about 10 days here broke some records over 100 degrees so triple digit temperatures for an extended period of time it's a lot of hot pavement around these plants there was some scorch a couple of those fronds got pruned off of each one of these but otherwise they really didn't skip a beat. They actually really seem to enjoy <laughs> that heat. I'm glad I paired them up with the Vinca. I think that that worked out a lot better than if I had used the Petunia or something. That's not the point of this video. Don't go on that tangent. Yeah, they've been fun. I think they're really cool looking. There's a lot of character to these palm trees. They have those fun, thick trunks on them. From what I understand, they're fairly easy to start from seeds. So if you can't find them as a plant, maybe you can find the seeds. It's going to need some warmth, but germination isn't supposed to be all that tricky should be something most people can pull off. And when these were delivered to me, they were sold to the people who brought them to me. 
as false bottle palms. So that might be a more common name you may find them under if you're just looking for any of the types of Gaussia palms. False bottle palm. Maybe that will give you some results. I haven't seen many when I've done that, but you know how that can go. The people I buy my palm trees from, they have a lot of connections down south. Some are really big growers and some are very small growers. And some of them are old timers. And the old timers sometimes just stick with these names that nobody else uses anymore. And that can make things difficult when you're trying to talk about a palm tree on a YouTube channel. Kind of cool to have those names to call back to. The false bottle palm, that's a fun name. And I can see it, at least with the Mexican variety. That's pretty much it. I talk more about the inflorescence and identification, but I don't have anything to go off of with these just yet because they're still pretty little and there's no inflorescence. Hey Tobes, how you doing baby? Yeah, overall they've been fun to grow. They've been easy to grow. Low fuss, haven't been all that demanding of water. That's why I was mentioning that they paired up well with those vinca that are down there. Sturdy, they handled that drought that we had this year for pretty much all year. It was a very, very, very dry year. They handled it wonderfully. If we had had more of a typical summer with a lot of humidity and moisture, I probably would have gotten more growth out of them. This one right here has been on drip irrigation and I haven't noticed a drastic difference in the growth between that one and this one over here that I've been hand watering. The one that's really hard to see because it's in the shade. Seemingly sturdy with nice fun trunks. I call it a moderate grower. I would not say this is growing as fast as the adenities and the foxtails are but there have been challenges with them this year. One, they had to acclimate to the lighting that's out here, and then we had drought and extreme heat, so those are all factors to keep in mind too, right? I'm not gonna make a blanket, blanket. I'm not gonna make a blanket statement about their speed of growth and all of that based off of one really wonky year weather-wise. Thought it was important to mention the weather that we had this year given how scraggly, minor looking. They aren't typically this scraggly, they have certainly come a long way though. These are looking much better than they did when they were delivered, that's for sure. Thought I should leave those old fronds on there so that there's a better representation. You can see how much things have grown, which is moderately, not a lot. They haven't grown a ton. I'd say like 20% slower than an Adenidia, maybe, which isn't all that drastic. That's not that bad. Something that I really do like about these, if we're gonna call them a false bottle palm, uh, these, at least the Caribbean varieties, more slender, not going to get crazy bulky and heavy and difficult to move in and out of the house as they get bigger. Well, I'm sure these will still get plenty heavy and plenty bulky and difficult to move in and out of the house, but not the same as with an actual bottle palm or even a spindle palm. Spindle palms are one of my favorite palm trees, but once they hit a certain size, it's, it's not that easy getting them in and out. If you have to move your plants in the house and outside, they get very heavy. I'm sure these will do the same, but I think I'm going to have longer until they get there because these don't seem to be quite as prone to the huge bases and swelling. And again, I'm referring to the Caribbean types, the Princeps, Tenuatas, the ones that still have a really cool looking swollen trunk, but not the same as, as a bottle palm that just get absolutely massive and very heavy. Yeah, I like them. That's my <laughs> final thought on them. Wasn't sure when they were delivered if I was going to care for these or not, but I think they're pretty cool. I can see lots of pros and cons to them, more pros than cons. Interested to see what they do next year because hopefully we'll have some more normal weather next year for them. Always exciting to get to talk about a new palm tree. Because like I said, further up north, just don't see them that often. I already rattled off the list of the ones that we see around here more commonly, but this, I never see these at the nurseries up here ever. I might get lucky and see a Bismarckia at the nursery sometimes, see spindles and bottles all the time, but again, with those, I know I only have a couple years with them, whereas with these, I can see these being around for a lot longer, as long as the people who storm over the winter don't kill them. All right, comment down below some of your favorite palm trees for those of you who move your plants in and out of the house, just favorite palm trees in general, especially those of you down in Florida and California, other places where you're growing these outdoors. I don't think I mentioned, it's a zone 10 and up, maybe 9B since there are people saying that they can take a light frost or a very light freeze than a 9B sheltered location. Let's talk about all this more with the mindset of plants that for people like me who are moving them in and out and having them in our backyards just for the summertime. Those of you who have places where maybe you could grow these all year outdoors might be a fun option for you. Or drought tolerant palm tree with a really neat looking trunk, very fun, graceful fronds, very nice in the wind. They really, they have a nice flow to them. I should have spent more time talking about the crown shafts on these. They have such a neat crown shaft. It goes from these really thick, chunky bases down there to a very slender and long, very long crown shaft. And the, even the fronds are neat, the way they stay all skinny and they start to open up really high the way they arch. Just a very interesting looking palm overall. 
To me, that reminds me of like a cartoon palm tree, something a child would draw and have dinosaurs crawling over the place around them. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, hey, Toby. Hi, baby, Toby. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.